Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning, I'm Jeff Kellum, and here are the headlines. Jack Seaman is out as the child director, and um, the new gr Northside grocery store is on schedule. And the details, we have no film at 11. <laughs> we do have some slides, though, at, at 535 or so. Jack isn't really out, he's here. <laughs> Look, there he is, he's the outgoing child director. And our other guest today is Les Aylesworth, who is the incoming child director. So we're gonna be talking about Chow, uh, report on the Chow Walk. We're gonna be talking about Futabago. We're gonna be talking about, um, oh, something called the Thanksgiving Food Challenge. Yes. And we're gonna be talking about the Northside Grocery Store. Mm -hmm. All those things, uh, and because Jack is gonna be quite intertwined with the development of that grocery store, which we'll be talking about today. It's kind of a, a report to the stockholders with the scores of churches that are part of our community of faith in our area. Um, this is what you're involved in. If you have a chow uh, box to receive uh, non-perishable food at your church, as, as many churches do. So let's begin. Uh, let's start, first of all, Les, welcome. Thank you very much. The incoming child director. Yes. We were talking a little bit about the learning curve. Tell me, tell me about that. Well, uh, there's a lot to know, a lot yeah. to know, a lot to learn. And uh, I've been into this about three weeks now, three yeah. and a half weeks. So I've uh, gotten myself completely wet. Um, at times I felt a little bit uh, like my head might go under, but so far, <laughs> so good. I'm, I'm keeping afloat and uh, really excited about uh, learning it and, and seeing, seeing the impact that we'll have in the community. Yes. Yeah. All right, here's your first test. What does CHOW stand for? Community Hunger Outreach Warehouse. Okay. <laughs> good See, question. Yeah. <laughs> well, for those who've come in late, it's, it's kind of important. There are people who, who hear the word CHOW and uh, most of us who've been around here for any length of time know what CHOW is, but it's always good to remind people it's a ministry of the Broome County Council of Churches. Yes. So previously, tell me a little bit about what brings you to CHOW. So right before I was uh, become, coming to CHOW, I was working for a large a uh, wholesale tire distributor um, in upstate New York and had done that for several years. And previous to that, I was uh, in pastoral ministry in uh, several different places, Last, lastly in upstate New York. And right. um, was uh, actually on, on a pastoral staff here and locally as well. So yeah. I come from pastoral ministry to business and to now chow. And what a combination. Yeah. Because this is a new kind of ministry. It is. It and really it, is. It, it kind of blends the the uh, business side of things in a unique way uh, and the ministry component, absolutely. And that's, yeah. I'm looking forward to combining those and see, see how it goes. We'll talk more about, about that because the Chow ministry is so uh, all encompassing in terms of, uh, well, just the incoming and outgoing food. And you said the turnover, uh, you were surprised at the yeah. turnover. Yeah, I'm amazed by how quickly food comes in it can literally be in people's stomachs that night. From yeah. the, comes in the morning and it can be out the door that later that morning and on someone's plate right. that same day. And Chow has, uh, you know, there's fundraising involved, yeah. there's the warehouse. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the relationship of Chow to Broom Bounty, um, help me understand that, Jack. You're yeah, so uh, Broom Bounty is Chow's uh, kind of a sub-program of Chow. It's our food recovery operation. So that actually uh, recovers about 1.5 million pounds of food every single year. So that's food that normally would have ended up in a landfill. Um, so we have two vehicles. They're, they recover food Monday through Friday um, from all of the local grocery stores and warehouses, Binghamton University, local schools. Um, and yeah, we, we turn that food over very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, as Les mentioned, you know, we could recover some food and it could be on somebody's table, uh, you know, that night. Right. So. Now I said you were the outgoing Chow <laughs> director. Uh, you're not going very far. Tell me about your new role. Yeah, so I'm very excited to be taking the, the general manager's position at the new grocery store that's going to be opening up uh, summer 2020 on the north side of Binghamton. Um, you know, the, the north side has been without a grocery store for over 23 years now. 
So it's, it's really exciting to be um, taking over that position and being involved in such a unique project at the Council of Churches. Um, it's been in the works for you know almost two years now. Yeah. Um, was our first visit to uh, to a similar program in Utica, New York, and in, you know every every day since then it's just been so exciting thinking about the future and um, you know we're really close. We're really close now to to providing that that uh, that service on the north side. I was by there and, and took some pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. I had driven by uh, accidentally and saw that building. I thought, boy, that looks like the drawings that I remember seeing when yeah. this was first proposed. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when I got the address yesterday off the website, I thought, man, that's that's it. So mm -hmm. I went by and took some pictures. And um, now there were only two guys working there yesterday. I, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I saw them up high and uh, mm -hmm. didn't want to invade their privacy. But, and there's a fence around it, so you can't get too many yeah. pictures close up. But but it is. Uh, it, it, the whole building is not, of course, the grocery store. That ground level, one wing, will be the grocery store. Correct, yeah, so we have a little over 5,000 square feet, and then uh, the other two wings on the bottom floor will be two other, um, uh, either other organizations or businesses will be in there, and then the three floors on top will be affordable housing. Wonderful. So it's, uh, yeah, it's incredible. What a great project. Mm -hmm. The uh, When we talk about a food desert, uh, there is, um, uh, there are some bodegas around, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the food there is not always fresh and, uh, um, I mean, it's good It's good in a pinch, but it's not the kind right. of thing where you want to go do your weekly shopping. It's expensive. Exactly. Yeah, you know, um, people that live in food deserts, which is essentially just a geographical location to where those people cannot get to a grocery store, um, they're forced to do their shopping at gas stations, bodegas, corner stores, dollar stores, yeah. um, and it's really difficult to find affordable, healthy food there, so they're um, they're forced to either walk or, or um, you know, settle for food that has low nutritional value, right. which um, you know leads to chronic illness and disease, and um, just furthers uh, a difficult life for people in, in food deserts. So, um, this grocery store is going to provide healthy um, produce and, and dairy products and meats. So it's going to give them, um, ex you know, exactly what they lack right now. I w was interested when, in the press release. Uh, the Forty-six percent of the population of that area lives uh, at or below the poverty index. Mm -hmm. um, Feeding America has indicated that families in poverty only adequately budget for 14 days of food. Exactly. So, uh, you know, that's just not feasible. Um, yeah. You know, for the rest of the month, they rely on. Um, you know, places like Chow, like Catholic Charities, like uh, um, food banks. And so, uh, you know, without a, a grocery store that has accessible, uh, affordable groceries, um, you know, they're either going to go without or they're going to be forced to utilize um, a pantry or, you know, another, another portion of the emergency food network. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're we're able to serve uh, to serve individuals, but um, you know, Chow just isn't able to to supply that much of, of the need. So, um, this grocery store is a really unique opportunity to not only serve the North Side, but also um, all the proceeds from the grocery store are going to be rolled back into the council of the church, uh, council of churches. So, um, you know, every dollar that's spent at the grocery store, that's um, you know, more meals that Chow can distribute. It's more wheelchair ramps that Faith in Action can build. It's more um, incarcerated individuals that jail ministries can minister to. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to have a ripple, a ripple effect through the entire county. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just going to serve the north side. It's going to make a difference in the entire, our entire service area. So it, it's, it's called a hybrid uh, store. What, tell yes. me what a hybrid grocery store is. Yeah, about. so hybrid or, or social purpose um, is, what, is what we call it. And, you know, for, for some folks that's kind of a confusing or a scary word, but really that just means that it's uh, uh, the for-profit arm um, and, and all the proceeds, all the profits from that grocery store are going to be rolled back into the Council of Churches. So um, it's a self-sustaining um, way for the Council of Churches to operate. Um, you know, it, things are changing in our donor base, so it's really necessary for us to create a self-sustaining, a sustainable way to continue the, the good work that we do, not just at Chow, but at the other programs of the Council, like sure. Faith in Action, Hospital, and Jail Ministries. Right. Uh, Les, uh, going into this work now as the, uh, as the director of Chow, mm -hmm. uh, what have been some of the challenges? We talked about the learning curve, but what are, what are some of the things that are uh, uh, personally for you moving into a, a new kind of ministry? 
What's this going to be about? Well, I mentioned that the, the, the pace of moving the food. For me, um, there's just a lot of the nuts and bolts at this point. Yeah. Um, learning the, the computer system, learning how the warehouse operates, uh, meeting the people. Uh, Learning develop, names. Learning names <laughs> of the agencies and actually trying to get out to see their community meals or their pantries because I'd like to do that. Yeah. I'd be able to put a face with a place and um, as well as just the the operating of the, the warehouse itself. So there's a lot of components to that that I'm uh, getting up to speed on. Yeah. And uh, so those are sort of the challenges at this point. It's like that nuts and bolts stuff. Yeah. Um, but I know it's just part of the learning curve. So the way the way I've viewed it is, uh, you know, it's like a fire hose. And I've learned in the past, if you try to drink it all, you can't. So I'm trying to take sips at it. Right. So I don't get blown off my feet. Right. And so far, I think I've managed to do that. And uh, so that's going to be an ongoing thing. And fortunately, like uh, has been mentioned, Jack isn't going anywhere. So I'm going to be leaning <laughs> on him a lot right. to... Uh, um, well, ask questions and figure out what to do. The store won't be opening until uh, summer of 2020. That's uh, correct. Right. And so the two of you will be working side by right. side as you learn the ropes there at, right. at Chow. Mm -hmm. One thing that these two have in common is job training. Mm -hmm. um, what's the job training component at, at Chow? We think of Chow as direct aid to feed the hungry in our community, uh, to help alleviate uh, hunger. In, in not only the city, but in the rural areas as well. Um, but there's that job training component too. Um, yeah. You can talk about that in the warehouse and then talk about it in the store. Sure, yeah, so a lot of folks, when they think of chow, they think of pantries, they think of non-perishable food drives, um, and, and that's what we do at, and, and at our core, but in, the, in recent years, we've really started to look at hunger more holistically, and one of the things that we've started is a job training program. Um, it's called Chow Works, and it's been in operation for over three years now. Um, and so, you know, every quarter we have 12 participants come into our warehouse. It's a relationship with uh, the Broome County Department of Social Services. They come in and they um, they get hands-on experience in the warehouse. They get forklift certified and OSHA certified, serve safe certified, um, as well as just the hands-on experience like inventory, um, customer service, picking orders, things like that. Um, and so. The idea is that those folks can get a job that pays above the poverty line and they'll no longer need our services. Um, and it's been really successful. 70% of the people that graduate from that program end up in full-time employment and, and they no longer need our services or the county's. Yeah. So it's, it really is a holistic program. It's, it's the full circle. Um, we're able to give them the experience they need to, uh, to be self-sustaining and, and really thrive in this community. And that will carry over into the grocery store. Yeah, so the idea is that the grocery store will kind of be part two of that, of that program and we'll be able to give somebody experience in a, a, another sector. So they'll have the warehouse experience and then they'll also have the grocery store experience and the, 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 uh, a different side of food handling. So, um, so we're really excited about that. I think it's going to take the job training program to the next level and really enrich it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Food of Bago uh, is going on right now. <laughs> yes. uh, the Town Square media uh, radio stations are involved in that. Have you been over to the Food of Bago? Yeah, Jack and I were over there this morning. Um, we talked with Tracy, and uh, it's off to a great start this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, they've already begun putting food into the back of the, the the Chow truck that we have parked there. You can't miss it. Um, what is it? 1280 Upper Front Street. 1290 Upper 1290 Front Street. 1290 Upper Street. Yeah. The Weiss Upper, parking lot. The Weiss parking lot. You can't miss the RV and the the Chow bus there, and it's uh, it's been a great. It's, it's going great. Good, good. Ends tomorrow, Monday. It does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, the the Chow Walk was another, basically a fundraiser. Um, yeah. So this was our 37th annual Hunger Walk for Chow this year, and um, it was really successful. We were back at Otsuningo Park. Um, which was great to be back there. It's been you know over a decade since it was there. Yeah. Historically, it's been at Binghamton University, but um, we were really happy to partner with the county again and be there. Uh, we raised enough money to purchase over 80,000 meals for the community. Um, nearly 200 walkers came through, and it was just a great day. Excellent. Yeah, yeah I got a, a thank you note um, from Mike Leahy mm -hmm. uh, uh, for uh, the contribution, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it told how many meals we had helped provide through our modest donation yeah. to the Chow Walk. And I, I, hadn't, I hadn't processed that, yeah. that 
for every dollar you're feeding, uh, providing four, four meals. Four meals. Four meals. Yeah. yeah. And it just, you know, that was. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I knew a lot about it because we've talked before. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, I thought I was an expert in all this chow stuff, and then <laughs> I got that letter and thought. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Our guests today on Encounter are Les Ailsworth, who's the incoming Chow Director, mm -hmm. and uh, Jack Seaman, a familiar face and beard, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the outgoing Chow Director, who, he'll be running uh, managing the new grocery store on the north side, mm -hmm. uh, a store which does not yet have a, uh, a name. It is the store with no name right now. Um, <laughs> we're, uh, we're we should working. have a contest. Yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah, we're really excited to see what uh, what folks come up with for a logo and a name. Um, it's really exciting. But for now, the placeholder is the Northside Market, and right. um, and yeah, that's uh, that's what that's where we're at right now. But uh, you know, more will be revealed. I think yep. in the next couple of weeks, we'll have uh, some proposals to choose from as far as a logo and a name. So it's. Uh, that's exciting. I can't wait to see what people come up with. Good deal. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to uh, Les, who's coming coming into the, um, the the Chow warehouse, fundraising, job training, mm -hmm. feeding the hungry. Personally, what does this mean for you to make this transition vocationally? Um, well, it means a lot. Uh, I grew up poor in Indica, a family of alcohol abuse, and. Um, as a kid, I remember getting the government cheese wow. and the dry milk and being one of those kids who we call now food insecure, not yeah. having meals. Um, I remember uh, when I was hungry, drinking lots of water just to fill your stomach up. Yeah. Um, not a lot of nutritional value there. <laughs> so the opportunity to do this is, is just near and dear to my heart. And uh, so I'm excited to be a part of it, to be able to um, give back to the community and and uh, you know oddly I can look in the mirror and see one of those kids yeah you know of course much older now but uh, so I I've experienced it to some degree and of course everyone's got their own story but uh, I think I can relate to a little bit of what some of the folks are going through yes. that that Chow seeks to serve and um, you know all the studies talk about food and hunger and school success and life success. And so I'm excited to be a part of an organization and a, a ministry that will lift people up and hopefully they can become something better than where they're at now. Yeah. And I'd like to think I'm part of an evidence of that yeah. um, in my own life, but I'm just excited about that. Yeah, we've, we've talked about um, how food insecurity can affect even the, w uh, the way a child learns. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way a child develops physically mm -hmm. and emotionally, yep. and you've experienced yep. some of that. And we often think of this as just being a satisfying of a physical appetite, um, but there's a deep human involvement in this right. whole idea of finding um, food security, knowing right. that you know where your next meal is coming from, and that it will be nutritious, and that it will strengthen you in body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Indeed. You, you know, we want to make sure that it's done in a way that uh, dignifies the person as well. You know, th that they don't feel they're a burden by needing food and then coming to a pantry to ask for food. We want to make sure that everyone we serve is not just served uh, a physical product of food, but they're yes. actually served emotionally and, and valued as a person because, um, especially when children, many of them, they've made no decision in life to become hungry. Right. You know, it's the circumstances they were perhaps born into. And so, um, yeah, it is, it's, it, it's important that we do that. Yeah. And they don't teach this in seminary necessarily. Not necessarily, no. no they didn't <laughs> teach it in mine. I don't, I don't know about yours. Um, when we look at the, let's move back to the grocery store for a moment to talk about the kinds of things that will be available there mm -hmm. in the grocery store. What food, um, what makes the store different in the, its offerings, for example, uh, when it opens next summer? Mm -hmm. So not only will you be able to find staple items like you would at a normal grocery store, but the grocery store is going to focus heavily on um, fresh items like produce, like meat and dairy products. So you're going to be able to find really affordable, really fresh uh, foods there. And contrary to uh, some rumors that have been flying around, it isn't going to be outdated 
you know, close to rotten food. <laughs> it, it will be, um, you know, top-notch food uh, that, that I would feed to my family and that I would encourage um, anybody to, to feed to their family. And, you know, another, another thing, um, there is no income requirements to, to shop at this grocery store. We encourage everybody to come to this grocery store, sure. no, no matter your walk of life. Um, you know, every customer at the grocery store is not only feeding their family and providing for themselves, but they're also helping out the Council of Churches and the good work that um, that the Council does uh, through Chow and through its other programs. So it's it really is a dual purpose, and um, you know, we encourage everybody. You know, once the store is open, come come and check it out and see for yourself. That, that's an important distinction to make. That this is not going to be a store where other stores, when they see something's nearly expired, ship it off to you. Mm -hmm. um, your food is coming through a distributor and it's, uh, this is based on a, on a model in Utica, New York. Correct, yes. So it's, it's gonna be really similar model. Um, again, the food is gonna be fresh, it's gonna be healthy, it's gonna be um, you know, perfectly fit for human consumption and uh, you know, it's gonna have that, uh, that dual purpose of, of supporting the council. And also, you know, I think it's really, uh, interesting and, and, and cool to point out as well is that this is going to be a zero waste grocery store because of our relationship with Chow or the relationship that we'll have with Chow any food is going to be able to be recovered by Broom Bounty before it goes bad so right. um, I think there's going to be very very little food um, that's being thrown away sure. I think it's going to be purchased or it's going to be donated to Chow. Let's talk briefly about uh, the Thanksgiving um, uh, Food challenge, it's called, at the government plaza. Uh, which of you wants to? I can, I can cover yeah, it. Yeah. Can cover. So uh, Senator Akshar actually reached out to uh, to um, the Council of Churches and, and asked, you know, what can what can he what can he do to help out Chow? And um, you know, we kind of had a brainstorming session, and uh, we came upon the fact that everybody loves a good challenge. Um, so he actually was was kind enough to challenge the county office building and Binghamton City Hall. And uh, the, on the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th, they're going to be having a challenge to uh, to see who can raise the most food and the most funds for yeah. Chow. Um, so anybody can make a donation at uh, the state office building, the county office building, or the city hall um, on those days during their their hours of operation. Um, you know, and again, every dollar provides four meals. They can they can. Uh, donate non-perishable goods and then on the 15th that Friday we'll have a press conference to wrap up um, you know who the winner is who, yeah. who who won whether it was the city the county or the state and um, I'm really excited I think it's gonna really put us in uh, great shape for the holidays that are coming up you know the need is great this time of year um, not only are the holidays coming up but it's getting colder people are turning their heat on people have um, you know, bills, I know my heating hmm. bill, I can never guess what it's going to be. I can never <laughs> right. budget for that. So, um, you know, that's what Chow is here for. It's, we're here for um, people who are just facing unexpected situations as well as those that are food insecure. Yeah. So, um, really grateful for that partnership. So, this is going to be at the Government Plaza and also uh, City Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called the Thanksgiving Food Challenge. And it'll be the 12th through the 14th. So, it's coming up this, this week. Yes. Uh, I'm interested in your story, Les, of, of growing up in a home where Thanksgiving and Christmas um, must have been a challenge for a, a family. They were. That was, they were. Um, you know, I can remember as a kid maybe getting one or two Christmas presents and so excited for them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, odd things like, uh, you know, you hear kids uh, complain about getting underwear for Christmas. That was that was a good gift. for me. That yeah. was a gift for me to yeah. get new underwear um, because, you know, it's maybe a little embarrassing, but you were getting hand-me-down underwear. Yeah. And, uh, and so, so one of the things we talked about with, with uh, Chow and donations, uh, things like that are not necessarily food items, we would accept as well. Um, I don't know about underwear, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, hygiene things, uh, you know, toothbrushes, toothpaste, right. uh, deodorants, you know, uh, things for women, um, diapers, wipes. Those are the types of things that we would we can distribute as well yeah. to people in need. And uh, so, yeah, um, but so I can understand that some of these folks uh, getting that maybe a free turkey this time of year mm -hmm. or free food this time of year is a uh, it seems so simple when you're doing the giving, but the yeah. impact can be huge. Yeah. You know, actually having a turkey on your table on Thanksgiving is pretty awesome. Yeah. And when you don't have it, it 
you know you're missing that. Yeah, yeah. You see the the Norman Rockwell uh, paintings yes. uh, mm -hmm. of the family around the table, the extended family, the the bounty of the table, mm -hmm. and realize that there are folks in our community right. who uh, the kids are sitting down to just a normal less than the normal meal That's that right. most of us enjoy at, right. at special occasions like Thanksgiving and uh, uh, the other yes. the holidays. Definitely. So uh, we're kind of toward the end of, of our time, uh, but one more uh, note about the, the, uh, the child walk has been accomplished, the um, great uh, Thanksgiving food challenge is, is yet to come, mm -hmm. the food of Bago is being filled even as we speak. Mm -hmm. Um, so things are going well for, yes. for Chow, and uh, you've, you've risen to the challenge of uh, this, <laughs> <laughs> your own job training. Yep. Yeah, so that's going to be helpful. And then, Jack, you're, you're involved in not only getting less, um, more involved in the, uh, no play on words there, uh, in, in the Chow ministry, but also looking toward the completion of this new uh, grocery store on the north side. We haven't even talked about where the store is. Yes. So the store is on the north side of Binghamton. It's going to be at 435 State Street. Uh, it's right across from the, the Binghamton Plaza where Kmart used to be. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, if you're if you're driving by, make sure to, to take a look. And um, we're going to be in the wing that's actually facing towards CVS. So if you look at the if you were to look at this from an aerial view, it, it kind of has the shape of a of a, a fidget spinner. I guess you could say it's got <laughs> three uh, three points. Um, and our point is is going to be the one that's facing CVS, and it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be great. I think the the, the shape and the size is yeah. perfect for us, and um, very very exciting. It was very very exciting. I love this. There's kind of a matrix here of, uh, of tradition and vision, mm -hmm. and uh, time and place are all coming together as this store and the the continuing ministry of, of Child Develop. Mm -hmm. Once again, our guests have been Les Aylesworth, who is the uh, new incoming child director. Yes and Jack Seaman, who is going to be the store manager of the Northside Grocery, um, the outgoing Chow director. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not incoming or outgoing. <laughs> I'm just sitting here a week by week hosting the Encounter program um, about once a month, I guess, uh, brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches. So thanks to WBNG-TV and to the Town Square Media Stations for carrying the audio portion of our program. I hope that in the coming week you'll be gentle with people and with yourself.